All right, this is 4.4 part two. We're just going to talk about reference angles. <clears throat> Your quiz is on Thursday. So I have a quiz review that is posted. I think it's available now. If not, I'll open it up, make sure it is. I'm going to go over it tomorrow in class. I'll post the answers, but um, I'll answer any questions. So just make sure you look at it before you come in tomorrow, just so you have an idea of what's going on. And then your quiz will be Thursday. I'll give you back tests on Friday. Um, hopefully, I'll have your quizzes done, too, so I can give them back to you as well before Thanksgiving. But we'll see. All right, so today... Is it, huh? Oh, sorry. Today, we're going to talk about, guys, reference... <coughs> excuse me, reference angles. All right, the values of trig functions of angles greater than 90, less than zero, can be determined from their value corresponding acute angles called reference angles. We talked about this yesterday. You guys had a picture, like an angle looked like this. Right, and it gave you the point on a terminal side, so this was in what quadrant? Second quadrant? And I showed you how we could find using X, Y, and R and all that stuff, but you can also find the trig functions by forming a reference angle. I'll explain to you what that means and how it is, but this is your reference angle out here. All right, I drew the, the triangle to show you. <clears throat> Everything on our unit circle is related to right triangle trig. Everything is. And this kind of all brings it together. But the two things I want you guys to understand about a reference angle, okay? Reference angle is formed between the terminal side and the horizontal axis. Which is the horizontal axis? The X, okay? The X axis. There's two things that reference angles always are. They're always acute. What does that mean? Smaller than 90. They're going to be 0 to 90 degrees, okay? <clears throat> they're not going to be negative. And they're always positive. It should say 89 point. It should be less than, not less than 90. <clears throat> they are always acute. Oh, my gosh, it's a lot of rain. And always positive. Whoops, I spelled positive wrong. All right, so we're going to figure out today how to find reference angles. And then we're going to, sh I'm going to show you how to use them. So you'll have some questions on your quiz that says, here is an angle. If it's in degrees and I say find the reference angle, your answer should be in degrees. If I say, here is an angle and it's in radians, find the reference angle, put it in radians. Very simple. Okay, here, <clears throat> here's what a reference angle looks like, just so you guys can understand. Right, if an angle is in the second quadrant, do you guys see how this angle right here is in quadrant two? Your reference angle is formed between this terminal side and the x-axis. Do you see this right triangle that's formed? The way you find the reference angle, if your angle is in the second quadrant, is you say 180 minus the angle. <coughs> you can also say pi minus the angle if you're in degrees, I mean radians. <coughs> If you are comfortable with just changing everything to degrees and working that way and changing backwards, I'm totally fine with that. If your angle occurs here, do you guys see this angle here? What quadrant does this angle end up in? Three. The three. So look, your reference angle is formed between the terminal side and the x-axis. Remember, guys, it's always the terminal side and the x-axis, not the y. You don't go towards the y. You go towards the x. The way that you figure this out, because remember, reference angles are always positive and always acute. In this quadrant, those numbers are between 180 and 270, so you can't put the 180 first. You got to put the bigger number first because they're always positive. So this would be the angle minus 180, or if you want to say the angle minus pi, if you want to work in radians. <clears throat> the two numbers that we focus on are 180 and 360. We don't ever use 90 and 270. Then if your angle happens to be over here in the fourth quadrant, all right, well, think about it. Your reference angle is formed from the terminal side to the x-axis. So in the fourth quadrant, it's 360 minus, whoops, 360 minus the angle or 2 pi minus the angle. Now, what quadrant did I skip? One. Quadrant one. Guys, what do you know about quadrant one? What's the degree measure in quadrant one? Between what and what? Zero and 90. So if your given angle is in the first quadrant, your given angle is the same thing as the reference angle. Because think about it. If, you're gonna, if you have an angle in the first quadrant, right? It's right here. 
you're going to draw <clears throat> the reference angle is from the terminal side to the x-axis. Isn't it the same angle? So if you're in quadrant one, <coughs> and they say to you, I have an angle of 74 degrees. What's the reference angle? It's 74 degrees. Because your reference angle is always two things, acute <coughs> excuse me, and positive. All right, so let's work on just figuring out these things. And again, some of you like to work in degrees. That's fine. If you want to change angles to degrees and then go back, I don't care. All right, so if you're given an angle measure, right, there's our theta. And we're finding the reference angle. What are the two things reference angles always are? Again, acute and positive. Is this number acute? No. So we've got to find <clears throat> where this angle would be acute. We've got to find the reference angle. So the first thing you're going to do is draw it. Think about this. This is 90, 180, 270, and 0, 360. Where is 300? It's over here in quadrant 4. All right, why is that important? Well, what's the rule for quadrant 4? 360. 360 minus, yeah? So 360 minus 300. What's your reference angle? 60 degrees. Check. Is that number positive? Yes. Is it acute? Yes, you're good to go. Did you start off in degrees? Then your answer should be in degrees. That's it. <coughs> All right, C's a little different. C starts off with a negative. When we start off with a negative, guys, we want to make it into a positive. What's negative 135 degrees the same as if it were a positive angle? How would I figure that out? I have 360. Good. So I get this would be an area where your calculator makes it a little quicker. So negative 135 plus 360. What do we get? 225. Okay, so I need, whoops, I need to find the reference angle for 225. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a little picture. 0, 360, 90, 180, 270. <clears throat> Where's 225? It's over here in quadrant 3, right? All right, so what's the rule? <clears throat> excuse me, what's the rule for quadrant 3? The number, 225, minus 180. Now, how could you check yourself if you made a mistake? I knew what you meant. That's fine. If you said 180 minus 225, what kind of an answer would you get? Negative. So you should say, oh, wait a second. It can't be negative. But what's 225 minus 180? How much? 45 degrees. Is that positive? Yes. Is it acute? Yes. Good to go. Is this terribly difficult? No. no. Do you have to do a couple things before you can answer it? Yeah. The next ones. All right. How's this different? It's in pi. It's in, pi, it's in radians. Now, you are welcome. If you want, you are welcome to say, okay, I'm going to deal with pi. I'm going to figure out where this is in terms of pi, and then I'm going to subtract and add or whatever. If you're more comfortable saying, I would just rather figure out where it is in degrees, that's fine. But what should your answer be in? Pi. Radians. You've got to go back to pi. If you start off in pi, you got to go back. So if we simplify, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, I'm sorry. We simplify here. Mm -hmm. You're going to be converted to degrees. Yeah, you want to go back. If you start off in radians, your answer needs to be in radians. So let's cross cancel here. Three goes into three once. Three goes into 180. How many times? 60. All right, so two times 60 is 120. So let's figure out where 120 is. <clears throat> Zero, 360, 90, 180, 270. Where's 120? Over here in quadrant two. Well, what's the rule for quadrant two? 180 minus. So 180 minus 120 gives me 60 degrees. Is that angle positive? Is it acute? Yes. Is that my final answer? No. What do I have to do with 60? I got to convert it back. If we started out in radians, we're going to end up in radians. 60 goes into 60 once. 60 goes into 180 three times. So what's your reference angle? Pi over 3. Perfect. Good job. How do we feel? Good job. <clears throat> All right, come here. 23 pi over 6. All right, I have absolutely no idea where that is on the unit circle. So, it's not even on the unit circle, but I mean in radians. So let's go ahead and simplify here. Let's go to degrees. 6 goes into 180 how many times? 30. Okay, what's 23 times 30? 690. Well, what do you know about 690? 690. More than a circle. So let's subtract a whole circle. <clears throat> let's subtract 360. What's 690 minus 360? 330. Okay. Is that between 0 and 360? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we can find out where that is and then find the reference angle. Where is 330? 
It's in quadrant four. What's the rule for Q4? 360 minus 330. So I get how much? 30 degrees. Is that a positive? Yes. Is it acute? Yes. Yes, but I got to convert back. Very good. So 30 goes into 30 once. 30 goes into 180 six times. So my reference angle. Perfect. Very good, guys. <coughs> Questions? You all right? All right, let's move along here. For we're going to do one more thing, and then we're done, boys. We're going to do one more thing, and then we're done. All right, it says to see how reference angles are used to evaluate. Some of you are like, well, what's the point of doing this? You can evaluate. <clears throat> Say you're given this angle, right? We did this yesterday, but we weren't given the X, Y. They just said this was 120 degrees. You don't have a unit circle, and you're trying to figure out, well, I don't know. I don't know what the sine and cosine is. This is another way to do it. So you're going to have a question on your quiz that you have to solve. You have to evaluate using this method. Now, well, I'll talk about it in a minute. <clears throat> do you see, like I talked about yesterday, here is my angle given. Here is the reference angle that is formed. Agreed? All right. It's going to make a special right triangle, either a 30, 60, 90, or a 45, 45, 90. God bless you, because that's what our unit circle is based on. So we are going to use that concept right now to figure out specific trig functions. <clears throat> All right, so determine the function associated with the reference angle. And then depending upon the quadrant, you have to put the appropriate signs. Meaning, if you're in the first quadrant, what's your x value? What's your y value? Both positive, right? Plus, plus. What's the second quadrant? Negative, positive. What's the third quadrant? Negative, negative. What's the fourth quadrant? Positive, negative. We talked about that yesterday. You guys need to know the signs of everything. <coughs> it's great if you memorize these, but you don't have to. I'm going to give you a portion of the unit circle, but it, I mean, it would be helpful if you guys memorize this. But if, I mean, if you didn't, no big deal. But what I want to show you here is this is what you're going to be given. All right, you're just going to be given a piece of it. Why are you only given a piece of it? Well, the unit circle guys, is the same all the way around. The only thing that changes are what in the ordered pairs? The signs. At right, pi over four, it's root two over two, root two over two. The equivalent in the second quadrant is the same ordered pair, it just has a negative in it. So what you guys are gonna do, let me show you exactly, this is, takes a second to do all this. It's not hard, it just takes a minute. And then we'll talk about quadrant angles and, and we're done. <clears throat> you're going to determine what quadrant the given angle lies in. That's the first thing you're going to do. Is it one, two, three, or four? Then you're going to find the reference angle. And then you're going to see why we need to draw it. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Now, we are going to be talking. Your answers here should be either 30, 60, 90, or 45. So we're talking about angles that are on the unit circle. So remind me again, if an angle is on the unit circle... The x value is what? Cosine. And the y value is what? Okay. If the angle is on the unit circle, we need to remember that. So the first thing you do here, number one, is determine where this angle is. So I'm going to say, okay, 4 pi over 3. Let's convert it. So this goes away. This goes away. 3 goes into 180. How many times? 60. So I have 240 degrees. <coughs> now, why is this important? Let me show you. Draw your angle. Where is 240? It's over here in quadrant three. Agreed? Okay. Well, I don't know. We don't have that part of the unit circle. You can't tell me. But I do know that I could create a reference angle right here. You guys agree with me? Okay. It's always from the terminal side to the x-axis. So I can now use my reference angles. Well, if I have something in quadrant three. What is the rule to find the reference angle? 240 minus 180. Okay, what's 240 minus 180? 60. 60. Don't second guess yourself. Okay, 60. Why is that important? We'll take this piece of our unit circle that we have. What is the ordered pair at 60 degrees? One half and? Square root of 3 over 2. Okay. So it's... X is one half, and Y is square root of three over two. 
<clears throat> since I'm in quadrant three, guys, what is the sign of my one half? Negative. It's negative one half because I went left, right? And what is the sign of root three over two? Negative root three over two. All right. If you don't draw the picture, it's not a big deal. Once you determine what quadrant it's in, then you can take that ordered pair and be like, oh, okay, since it's in quadrant three, I know both the X and the Y are negative. So now I can look and say, okay, what does the question ask for? The question asks for the cosine of four pi over three. Cosine is what value? What's your cosine, guys? X. You can say X over R. You can say X or X over R since it's going to be on the unit circle. I'll show you why you can always put R. What's your X value? Negative one half. Negative one half. Okay. Does anybody know what your R value is on anything with the unit circle? Let me just show you something real quick. You don't have to write this down. How do you find R? X squared plus. Okay. So if I took negative one half squared plus negative root 3 over 2 squared equals r squared, okay? This goes here and here, right? So 1 fourth plus, this goes here and here, right? 3 fourths. What's 1 fourth plus 3 fourths? r is 1. Every time you have something on the unit circle, this is how we get our <coughs> trig functions. Any angle that is on the unit circle... Like over here, your this is always one radian. This is always one radian. This is always one radian. So when you come to think of these questions, when the angle's on the unit circle, yep. When it's not, it's like, here's the point on the terminal side, that sort of a thing. So in this case, that's why, guys, when Josh just said cosine is x over r, he's 100% right. But when an angle is on the unit circle, what's your r value always going to be? One, so you don't have to worry about the R. You can put it there, but it's a big deal. So you just answered this question and said the cosine of theta is negative one half. I need to see that. You guys are only going to get that one piece of the unit circle. So I need to see you guys figure out, first of all, where <clears throat> this angle occurs. Then you have to figure out what the signs are. Then you have to figure out what the trig function is. Yes. No, because we're, we're, we're looking for the trig value of cosine. If you wanted to, you could, and then find on the unit circle. That's fine. All right, let's look at tangent of negative 210, okay? Talk to yourself for a second. What is tangent? What over what? X. Y over X, right? Okay, so <clears throat> I have a negative 210. I don't like to deal with negative, so I need to do what? I'm going to add 360. So what's negative 210 and a positive 360? 150, okay, so let's figure out where 150 is. <coughs> this is 90, and this is 180. So it's going to be in what quadrant? Second quadrant, all right. Why is that important? We're going to find the reference angle, but what is the signs for x and y in the second quadrant? Negative. X is negative, y is positive, okay? That's important to know. So now I have to figure out what the reference angle is. <coughs> How do you find the reference angle in quadrant two? 180 minus 150 gives me 30 degrees, okay? So go over here to 30. What's the ordered pair at 30? Square three over two and one half, okay? So I have square root of three over two and one half. But think about it, guys. We're in the second quadrant here. So x, awesome, is negative square root of 3 over 2, and y is positive 1 half. So if you want to just put it right here, that's fine. <clears throat> now we can evaluate. We can say, okay, we want the tangent. Tangent of theta is your y value, which is 1 half, over your x value, negative root 3 over 2. Well, what do I do here? Keep, change, flip. Hold on. This is a 2. <laughs> so it's negative 1 over root 3. So what am I getting here? Negative square root of 3 over 3. That's your tangent. So your answer here is tangent of theta equals negative root 3 over 3. 
What we've done, guys, using reference angles to determine trig functions, we've, we've taken about four different things that we've learned, and we put it all together. <clears throat> That's what this has done. All right, so let's look at the next one. Write yourself some notes so you can see what you're looking for, what you're being asked. Cosecant. Remind yourself what cosecant is. Well, cosecant goes with sine, right? And sine is y over r. So cosecant of theta is going to be r over what? y. What's your r value? One. We already know that. Think about that. When we first learned cosecant of theta was 1 over y, correct? That's why it was 1, because your r is always 1. Tangent is y over x. Cotangent is x over y. All right, so let's figure out where we're looking. 11 pi over 4 is where? Pi cancels. 4 goes in here, what, 45? What's 45 times 11? 495. Well, what do we know about 495? Hey, it's bigger than a circle, so I'm going to subtract with a circle. What if it was bigger than two circles? Yes, subtract again. Very good. <clears throat> All right, so I get 135. All right, let's talk about 135. Where is that? It is in quadrant two. It's over here. So what do we know about quadrant two? What are the signs in quadrant two? Um, x is negative, y is positive. X is negative, y is positive. Good. <coughs> How do you figure out a reference angle in quadrant two? 180 minus, right? What's 180 minus 135? 45. 45. Oh, we like 45s. Why do we like 45s? What's the, ra what's the ordered pair at 45? The same thing, root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. So think about what your reference angle looks like. It's formed right here. What is your x value? Negative. What is your y value? Positive. And now we can go ahead and say, okay, great. <clears throat> How do you find cosecant? It's your r. Well, what's your r value? 1 over, what's y? Square root 2 over 2. So I have 1 times 2 over square root of 2, like that, yeah? Okay, so 2 over square root of 2, I rationalize. So I have 2 root 2 over 2, what does that give me? Square root of 2. So the cosecant of theta is the square root of 2. Yeah, I was just showing how it relates. It's all the same. All right, last thing I want to talk about, and then we're done. All right, there's a question or two on WebAssign, and you'll probably have one of these on the quiz. It talks about quadrant angles. Anybody know what the quadrant angles are? Mm -hmm. Actually, can you wait one second? I just want you to see this. Anybody know where the quadrant angles are by chance? Anybody have a clue of what the quadrant angles are? What I'm writing, right? It's where the quadrants are divided, right? So if you end up having to find the sine or cosine or something of the quadrant angles, you guys need to know what the ordered pairs are at these spots. It's real easy. First of all, what is your R value on anything on the unit circle? One. So if I start here at zero and I come out here, how many spaces did I go out? One, and I went up or down how many? Zero. That's the ordered pair there. So if I start at the origin and I go up, how many spaces did I go left and right? Zero. And how many did I go up? One. Good. So here, if I go to the left, I went where? Negative one, zero. And then here, if I go down, I went zero, negative one. That's where those ordered pairs come from. Oh, look at it all just came together. Oh my God, so exciting. So if I said to you guys right now, what is the cosine or what's the tangent? What is the tangent of pi? How do you find tangents? What over what? Y over X. So put your Y over your X and it's zero. What is the tangent of pi over two? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, what is it? It's 1 over 0, right? 
which becomes undefined. That is not zero. Go ahead now, Olympics. <clears throat> so your quadrant angles, guys, are just where the quadrants separate, where first becomes second, second becomes third. And from the origin, you're moving right one, up one, left one, down one. All right? Does everybody understand that? We are done. <laughs>